science, and I know that to be true from my own experience, and I cannot think of anything more worthwhile, more exciting, more meaningful for each of us here today and really across the country as Americans than to be uh, alive to even better have had a hand in participating in the discovery of life on another world. It's going to be one of the most, it'll be the defining moment, I think, of our of our lifetimes, it'll define our civilization. It'll, it'll it'll be a moment that everyone on Earth will remember when that happens. Just as we were, we uh, those of you who were alive in 1969 remember where you were and what you were doing when Neil Armstrong set foot on the foot on the moon for the first time. That moment when we realize we're no longer alone and that life actually exists in other worlds will be a transformational moment in the history of civilization on Earth and change our perspective as profoundly uh, towards the rest of the universe and. Uh, and our solar system, as did the arrival of these uh, Europeans, these strange people with, uh, with uh, sails that appeared on the horizon of the New World when uh, Columbus and the first explorers reached, uh, reached the Americas. And for me to be here today with my good friend Lamar Smith, uh, Adam Schiff, with all these great scientists and minds here in the room, the Planetary Society, thank you and God bless you for spreading the word and educating and inspiring and lighting a fire underneath the people of the United States about how important this mission is. And the National Geographic, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this incredible article that has done so much to uh, raise awareness uh, in, uh, in the eyes of the country. People see that on the cover of National Geographic and it means something then. That's actually been elevated to a, a level of awareness and, 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 and plausibility that uh, we couldn't achieve otherwise. It's, um, to me, in my mind, really the most exciting thing I've ever worked on. I had the privilege of being a extraordinary privilege of representing the people of Texas and West Houston in this uh, greatest country. And, uh, you know, we all feel this way. Adam does it about California as well. But, but uh, we, uh, it's, it's, uh, as a Texan, you know, in particular, I guess, we, we always feel we're representing the greatest state and the greatest country in the, in the history of the world. And it's a real privilege. And of all the things I get to work on, we work on a lot of things like, you know, expanding freeways and, and helping nanotechnology is one of my passions and helping identify and cure human disease at the cellular level curing diseases before children are born, how marvelous that is to get to help work on that. But to have had a hand in the discovery of life in another world and this mission to Europa is truly one of the most gratifying, exciting, and meaningful things that I've ever had the privilege of working on. And in fact, when I got on the Appropriations Committee in 2003, I actually didn't want the job. Um, my neighbor to the south, who I, uh, Tom DeLay, was becoming majority leader, and he offered me his seat on appropriations. And I said, you know, really, I don't want it. I'm going to say no to everything unless it's science or national defense. Uh, and uh, he said, you're hired. And it's, uh, it's been a great assignment because you realize the work that Lamar does in the science committee with the authorization bills that they put together, it's our job. Adam and I work arm in arm in this effort to keep the gas tank full, to make sure there's enough funding to fuel these extraordinary missions and that NASA has the freedom, the money, and the support that they need to do what they do best. And I know it's one of our dreams, Chairman Smith, uh, Adam and I, uh, Chairman Frank Wool, is to give NASA the funding and the support they need and get the politics out of the way. Just give you the freedom that you need to do what you do best and bloom and blossom and thrive and go where, uh, seek out new life and new civilizations and go where no human has ever gone before. And that's what the mission to Europa is all about. That's what has lit my fire on this from day one. And I, I can't think of any better illustration of how important this mission is than Kevin Hand's absolute genius illustration of all the water on Earth and all the water in Europa. In one image you can quickly see, and I carry that with me on my iPhone, as many of you have talked to me about Europa before know, anytime I get a chance to talk to anybody about it, I pull that image out and say, why is Europa important? So why Europa? Why does it matter? And that illustration does more than anything else, I think, answer all of the, all of the questions. And it also, I think, is important to remember, too, that as NASA has announced today that the, they are confident that we're going to discover life in another world within 20 years, and you look at the article itself, and the focus is on extra, uh, you know, planets beyond our solar system, that there's probably 100 million uh, Earth-like planets in just the Milky Way galaxy alone, based on that, on Lincoln's eyeball, as Lamar said, that tiny little spot, and I think it's Ursa Major, we're looking at a above the plane of the, uh, of the uh, galaxy to an area that's relatively dust-free and not supposed to be many stars and bang, they're everywhere. That, I, it reminds me of a, a good friend of mine. I'm a, I'm a mineral and fossil collector and I've been an amateur astronomer since I was uh, 12. I still have my Celestron 8 I bought for myself as a graduation present from high school. But a good friend of mine who's also a fossil collector was from Dallas and he drove all over the north Texas area into Oklahoma and Arkansas, all over the West Texas looking for fossils. He wanted a, a fossil fish with teeth. He just, 
and he looked for years all through college. He couldn't find one anywhere. And one day after college, he's standing in his uh, back door of his house, looking out over the backyard, and sees a little creek out there, and thinks, I'm never going to find a nice fish fossil. And he looks in his backyard, and there's a, a creek out there, and he thought, surely not. It can't be. And he walked out in his backyard, and the very first piece of shale that he kicked over had a spectacular fossil fish jawbone in it with all the teeth. We don't need to wait to go find life in another solar system. It's right here in our own backyard. It will be seething with life. The oceans of Europa will literally be seething with life. It's just irrefutable. It's so logical. It's so self-evident, I think, when you analyze it. Look at the, the logic of the situation. Where you've got three to four times more water than there is on Earth. You've got vast amounts of heat pouring out through the uh, seafloor with, obviously, the opportunity for life to form there at those volcanic vents where you got the heat and the chemical energy to do so. You also recognize, of course, when you read the articles about the tremendous radiation from Jupiter stripping away, this is also logical, stripping away the hydrogen on the uh, water molecules and leaving oxygen enriched ice that will then plunge back into the ocean. And so that we got, we got, okay, you got a saltwater ocean, vast amounts of heat, the chemicals pouring in from Io and elsewhere that are turning the, obviously, the surface ice. That's where that orange is, no doubt, coming from. It's oxygen replenished for billions of years. It's also been protected from asteroid strikes. You know, the Earth has been repeatedly sterilized by massive asteroid strikes over the lifetime of the planet, and the ocean to Europa have been shielded from that. Anytime you get an asteroid impact on that, on that, world, on that ocean uh, world, it's going to essentially shield life there from uh, being uh, sterilized or exterminated. So it's right here in our own backyard, just like my friend that found the fossil, foot, uh, fossil fish jawbone in his own backyard. We're not going to need to go far to find life. And it's just our, our responsibility. I know Lamar, Adam, and I uh, share the passion and the commitment to do whatever it takes to make sure that we find, uh, we find the money, we do what it takes to work arm in arm to give these brilliant scientists in the room here who are making that dream come true to transform our civilization forever. And when we're old and gray and in a wheelchair and look back on this time, we'll remember that we were, we were here. We had some role, some part to play in uh, finding life on another world that forever changed uh, civilization as we know it and improved mankind for the better. What better legacy could we possibly leave for the future than that? Thank you very, very much.